Welcome back, everybody. This is How Not To MTGA. Uh, I'm Nil Gravity, and uh, today we're going to play Popper. And uh, instead of going over the decks, uh, I'm just going to narrate, and um, uh, I'll put the deck description, or the, yeah, the deck descriptions in the, the comments if you're curious. Okay. Want that precious, precious gold and those sweet um, alternate arts. Oh, one thing that it says in the description for the the No Escape Popper is um, they banned uh, where is it? Du -du -du -du. Persistent Partitioner. So <laughs> the one of the uh, Popper decks that I was customized. Uh, customizing or for this event um, I can't use it so uh, yeah hopefully they don't ban it from singles we'll see though and oh yeah my popper nutrition deck was uh Something was wrong with that one. Uh, I, I think I, I had accidentally put in... I um, uh, forget what enchantment it was. Alright, so we're going with Rodent pop Popper Relation. I was trying to work Popper into all the titles. I was doing just subtle or clever titles before it, but then I forget what's in them then. So I have to have the word Popper in there, so I'm really good for it. <clears throat> Do you need to build... I want to build a Cascade deck, because I predict that's one of the next thing, events they're going to have. Okay. No red, which can be a problem. Hardly any rats. But I only have two enchantments uh, in this deck, and it's one of the few things that bring my guys up from being one toughness, so I decided to keep it. One bad thing about not looking at things ahead of time is that uh, my uh, mana base might be broken and I wouldn't even know it. I was thinking about oopsing. Yeah, the card draw, it's worth it to have your creatures die and get the card draw. That's, that's the other reason I keep that in there. Sometimes it leads to, it means playing two rats in a turn, which is what's happening here. attacks me, I'll be able to... For a second there I was scared that I, uh, that I attack. Uh, for those who don't know, uh, I, uh, I record the, I record later on the, <laughs> uh, the audio, the commentary I record after, way after playing, so. Blocking. Jeez, another black mana. Now 
how I get the red mana. <laughs> The only thing it would have been, it would have, I guess it would have been harder for them to get the Colossal Dreadmall out if I had gotten that earlier. Because <clears throat> I could have nuked his uh, elves. Sergeant Dink, out the leaf. Well played, well played. I guess Sergeant could, is gender neutral, so it could be either. I don't know why I assume it's a male so often. The only person I play magic with in person is female, so. Alright, I actually got a red mana going this time. That's nice. Uh oh. Cats against rats. Things not bode well. So getting out lots of rats is important, which is why I prioritized card draw. Um, I don't think it did did me any favors uh, here. So I remember having good um, luck with this rat deck before. So either the metas changed significantly, or um, I tuned it into obsolescence. I guess I could have just had really bad luck. But I don't think that's the case. Okay. For some reason that card just got stuck up in the air. I don't understand what happened there. <laughs> I'll definitely be able to play two rats. Sitting here now, I'm very tempted to swap the red out for green. <laughs> Actually, I have seen a good build of, uh, of the rats that um, that I should emulate. Uh, you can't you can do it in singleton, but you can't do it in popper. There's a, a legendary creature that makes creatures with either a power or toughness of one unblockable, and so you just get out a bunch of rats, and you play her, and then you run through all your unblockable rats. So all my rats have first strike. Mm. Bring that out. Trying to get the life back quickly. It's the problem with my fragile little rats, I never know. How long they're gonna last. I did try building a, a version of this with white, because with white you can give your rats indestructible and stuff. Um, that didn't seem to work terribly well for me. saying all this very pessimistically, even though I feel good watching it right now, even though I only have five left. Give him first strike again. Okay. 
Okay, and this time both of my rats will be enough to take out that um, Phylum Hulk. Now we're pretty close to even here. Oh, I'm out of first strikes, which is a problem. I should probably just replace... Well, they give me the card draw, but um, I probably should just go with the, um, the equipment. Uh, I had those in before, but didn't do well. But if I did switch to green, I could mana ramp, and then the equipment would probably work better. Because I'm doing damage, the lifelink should trigger. The other, um, I also went, instead of using, um, the, I, there is a good debate as to whether or not I should use the, um, the combat tricks that give me first strike and a bonus instead of the one with the card draw, but, um, like I said, I really feel like the card draw is important because that can mean more rats, so. So I didn't math real well on this. I, I basically them pulling off a proliferate trigger just totally screwed everything up because I um I was really counting on having one or two health here. Uh, wait, actually, even then it wouldn't have helped. <laughs> so I just bad at mathed. So yeah, it didn't go well for me. But like I've said before, hopefully you can watch these and figure out how to make that better for you. So. G666. All right, no red mana again. Yay. All right. I think this is the last time I try to get the rat deck to work. with my one uh, <laughs> deck would be kind of interesting the um, where I build the or um, with using near March that'd be kind of funny <laughs> that'd be extra janky though so if if it was easy to pull off I probably wouldn't want to do it I, I also get kind of turned off by doing anything I see other people do, so that can be tough magic because there's only so many different ways to reconfigure the cards. And... Okay. 
I debate a lot about using Burglar Rat. I took it out of this one, even though it's pseudo removal, really. Oh shit! Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna pitch the mountain. Uh, I think if I had uh, Cyclonic, see that's the one. This deck does rely on me getting keeping four rats on the board, and then using a uh, um, what is it, Cyclonic Rift or something like that. It makes it so the enemy, all their creatures take one damage, and then they can't block. Luckily, my tossing the red mana paid off. Of course, I could maybe have two red mana now, but... Alright, so now they're... Things are looking good. They're only at three life. kind of funny because there's like no ramp for black now when one of the first uh, there one of the first play sets of in magic was uh, dark included dark ritual which was pay one uh, pay one and get three uh, uh, three mana so So, the first strike is working the way it's supposed to. Forcing them to block. Um, a good thing if I did run green instead, I could, there'd probably be ways to give my rats trample. So, that is another thing to consider. That's where a lot of these decks where you build up your creatures fast kind of fall apart is when you don't have trample. I don't know if there's currently an equipment that gives you trample. I'll have to look into that. Um, I can't remember what's been cycled out. It would also be nice if we had a uh, if um, Modern Horizons came to Arena it's very suspicious <laughs> that they introduced cards with Cascade and then we're not supposedly not getting them on our own. Oh, did I actually win this one? Yay! It didn't even use the primary strategy. I'm gonna have to look to see how many are in this deck, because I think I might have repurposed it as a singleton deck. Or it was a singleton deck that I repurposed, so. Um, uh, whatever that card is that I keep thinking is Cyclonic Rift. Um, I should see if I only have one copy in here, because if I only have one copy in here, that... I thought I saw at least two in there. But I'll have to look in the description and see. Alright. Oh, next down. Oh yeah, that's where I found that Legion's Landing, that was the enchantment I put in there. Yeah, um... Somehow I missed that when I was checking it for Pauper. And this deck is uh, Steel's Life, so that's why it's called Hopper Nutrition. It was basically the first uh, in the first Popper event since uh, they uh, cleared all our cards and had to start over for the. I don't know if we're no longer in beta, how that worked. Anyways, um, this was like one of my first decks and I just for Popper and I, I recently just retuned it.
Um, so it's my, mostly life gain because it, uh, you know, it's focused around the epic hero of blood. And then, um, but I put in Dusk Leech and Zealot because, um, Zealot. I'm going to slow down their ramp, so that's why I use this now. Um, but the Dusk Legion Zealot, it helps me get out the Epicure of Blood because it, um, you know, it's, uh, it's gas, so. Alright, and as I've explained in another video, I personally like the Relic because, um, it's card draw, you don't have to pay for it, and you gain life, so in decks where there's no other life gain, the extra 12 can make a difference, and in this one, it could be, you know, you could have four of those out, and you can knock the enemy down for life and get, you know, put four cards in your hand that way. Alright. I purposely tapped it for a colorless mana, because, um, and the black, because I wanted to make sure that there was a white left over for my... My hawk. Okay, and... Alright, so I got a good blocker out and start to knock their life down, bleed them out. You know, it's pretty suspicious of that. <laughs> I had plenty of life, so I thought it was worth it, the risk there. Oh, okay, I had three mana left either way, so the relic was fine. Doing. Okay. I don't know what the holdup is. Just gotta just go for an attack. That was a tough decision. Okay, nice. Yeah, just what I thought they were up to. The Edelfield promotion is great, because uh, you don't lose that. Uh, I forget what the effect is that people... Oh yeah, they just scooped. Um, but a lot of people like, um, for this deck, uh, it gives you a plus two, and, um, and you get two life. Um, but Battlefield Promotion is nice because you get that, not only do you get that first strike, which can make all the difference in the world, but you also, you get to keep that gain of power. And when you have as many 1-1 one, one creatures as this deck does, uh, that, that makes a big difference. And, uh, you know, not only you're, when, when you're dealing with a life deck, a life, uh, lifelink deck, you know, uh, a 1-1 one, one counter is a swing of 4 instead of a swing of 2, so... <clears throat> Alright. Let's see my... I like how I left that mountain up there in the middle. <laughs> I use a touch screen for this, so uh, it just lingers wherever I last left my finger on that. There we go. <laughs> right, this is usually a good matchup because um, they uh, they're in a race, and I can severely slow down their ability to race with this deck.
Putting, playing the Zila effectively stops the Pyromancer from attacking. Or at least... Uh, with I got rid of his removal, basically. So... Now I can play my... Little, my lifelink creatures with uh, a little less chance of... Uh, them taking me down. So my decision making here is do I want another card draw or um yeah. So do I think that they can do 12 damage in a turn? <laughs> is what it, it's basically my calculation there. Yeah. Okay. Now I have to try to grow my forces faster than they can take them out. So, if I'm smart, I'll tap the swamp first because the last thing I need is to be left with just a swamp. Okay. Um, usually, with the dual color land out, it taps that last. So. <clears throat> rough. There you go with the goblin. I usually, it's usually better to remove a threat than <clears throat> I think I'm making double checking the math on this because I could play the relic first <clears throat> and then still play everything else I want to play yeah because I need to get the hawk out and then still be able to play battlefield promotion it's the only chance I have and I gotta hope that those other guys stole or er, took care of all their removal. So, six, seven. I'm trying to count how far away from Ascend I am. <laughs> Because the mana is not my top priority at this point, because I have enough to get out my uh, my win condition. So, as it were, it's not the greatest win condition, but for Popper, it'll do the job. Man, he still doesn't want that Pyromancer to die. Oh man, really struggling with that. I was a little worried about playing this too early, but um, I also uh, sometimes I get a little click happy with the button pushing and skip on the block phase by accident, so. Okay. Um, oh, okay, I can. I can play this, but I'll. And so my ascend is triggered, but. Uh, but it's tapped, so I can't get the life for it. <clears throat> but I've got two blockers, life gain engine. So, uh, eight life's not the worst position to be in. Yeah, that sucks. Alright. Trade on the goblin, okay. Okay. Yeah, time to cash in. Nice. Let's 
It's hard to argue with card draw. You know, just... Uh... If you... One thing, I don't use a lot of card draw in blue, actually, because you don't get the card draw with upside. You know. There we go. Loading, loading, loading. Dreaming Cat. There is a great Neil Gaiman story in um, the Sandman series called uh, Dream of a Thousand Cats. I highly recommend. It's, I forget what volume of it it's in. It's like in like volume 6 or something like that. The series is long. Yeah, Dream of a Thousand Cats. It's so good. So I, I wonder if Dreaming Cat is a reference to that. Okay, going for the Zealot. I don't know why I struggle with that. Zealot is, I think, is the most acceptable pronunciation of that word. Mm. Okay. Don't remember how this matchup went. I remember playing this. I don't remember how it goes. Um. Hmm. I don't know if I would have played it the same way. Uh, I was definitely thinking that the other bringing out Healer's Hawk and having the battlefield promotion ant ready would have been a good play. So I kind of wish I had done that. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if um, the Epicur is uh, is really such a win condition in this deck because unlike other versions of this, there's not like um, uh, there's not just like a, a huge amount of life gain being done in a turn. It's, it's just all reliant on combat tricks and well, it's more of a war of attrition. So, but having a four four come out is uh, with some upside and its removal bait, so it's a pretty good deal. Oh, crap. Of course somebody decides to mow right now. I plan on mowing, but I fell asleep last night when I was supposed to be recording this, so hopefully you guys can't hear that. <clears throat> So far, every time I said, hopefully you guys can't hear that, uh, other than a little bit of dog howling, which was coming from inside the room, you haven't, so. <laughs> well, okay, now I'm gonna do the healer's hawk. Okay. The Territory of Hammer, Hammer Skull, that can, uh, that's a pretty good card in this format, so. I've got a deck that uses it that I did quite well with. Which you guys should see later. I don't remember if I play it this time or not. I think at this point I decided that I was winning the War of Attrition, so I should just start, start trying to whittle them down as quickly as possible. 
Usually with this deck, I'm sort of on the back foot, but on this, yeah, so you just screw this. Yeah, I was just about to get all that card draw, so wasn't looking good for him. Or her, actually, in that case. I'm pretty sure. Natashandra is their icon, and Dreamy Cat. Not that you, you know. Talk way too much about gender in this. <laughs> Redick. Redict. Yeah, one of these games, I don't know if it's one I recorded, but um, I am so used to using <laughs> uh, mana that doesn't come into play tap that it really screwed me up. Red Deck wins must be a popular strategy in uh, this format. It's a number of decks I've run into now. So I have yet to pull off. There is part of the reason I use Charm Stray is because whenever you bring out another Charm Stray, it gives all other Charm Strays a plus one. And my plan was to get out a couple charm strays and then if one is killed then use recover to bring the charm stray back uh, and then give the other charm strays a bonus again and uh, I have yet to pull that trick off Hopefully he doesn't have a spell he can cast, or she. Leon. Uh, some people like to pl just like Leandra, so they use her as their avatar. <clears throat> it's kind of my uh, fixation on that is kind of equal parts. Uh, you know, my own progressive leanings and my own fascination with how my brain works <laughs> and my, uh, you know, subconscious biases. Uh, if you go back in my playlist, I did a video about uh, how one of my uh, comics I made uh, turned out to be kind of racist in retrospect. <laughs> so it's, it's a, a subject matter that I've dipped into before. So I use the recover to get the straight, uh, the charm stray back, but um, it didn't work the way I hoped. Yeah, if I had had other creatures that that weren't so expensive, then I I should probably drop down how many of those I have in the deck. Um, we'll see. Because I think so far in all the playing I've done, I've gotten maybe five mana off of him. Yeah. <laughs> that lawnmower sounds close. But I've got very little time before noisy rats get home, so... The show must go on. It's already late anyway, so I should have put this up on Friday. Okay. So next turn I'll definitely be able to get him out. And then just keep getting him out every turn <laughs> until they run out of removal. <laughs> or I win. Is 
Did I add up to 14 or did I? Yeah. I was really afraid that they had a charging horn or whatever. This was the best play or not. They could have just finished me off there. Well, I guess they did anyway, so. Yeah, I just. Uh, did not get enough life gain fast enough, so. That's the problem with that one. Alright. Um. My Undergrowth and Hex deck I haven't done anything with in the last two expansions, so uh, I'm not going to play those. So this will be the last deck. Uh, this is like my powerhouse. I've won so many games with this one. Oh, and the one that's called Don't Preach. Uh, you know, Popper Don't Preach. So. If you're familiar with that old song... Okay. Yeah, so this one uses life gain just to keep me in it long enough to get my board state in place, and then uh, it's a, I'd say it's a mid-range deck, because I'm, I'm trying to get out some 3 and 4 drop creatures, and then uh, um, those enable me to use, to utilize my uh, cheap removal. Because all the removal is based on creatures being tapped. So. Got the hammer skull and the stag in the deck to. So I want to get that out. Um, the one thing on this deck. Uh, so I originally built it because um, I didn't like, like token generating creatures and stuff that never attacked. <laughs> So they're kind of hard to remove for uh, white, uh, and uh, you know they needed direct removal. So, um, but I don't know if there's anything like that in this format necessarily that somebody wouldn't attack with. But I have enough life gain in here that a lot of times that I just win because of the life gain. Okay, yeah, I'll trade a bishop soldier with him, that's no problem. It's kind of a win-win for me. Oh, unless they do that, I guess. The the life gain is secondary for me, so that's that's fine with me that they remove that. That I'm not so cool with. <laughs> That's novel. Yeah, the one way that this deck usually uh, usually I can win as long as I can keep ahead on uh, um, creatures on them, because that's my biggest creature is a 3-3, three, three, I think. So um, if they can get more 3-3s, three, uh, more 3 toughness or uh, power creatures out, then I can attack with in a turn. Or, or tap down on them, that's when things start going badly for me. It's still pretty good right now. So they All right, time to break out the removal. I 
Let's see if my lawnmower works. My lawnmower, uh, I tried to mow two days ago and it would not start. Um, it is 10 years old though, so. If I'm lucky, it's just the battery, because it's a it's an electric mower. Oh. I decided I couldn't afford an electric car, so I got an electric lawnmower. <laughs> oh. Now they're gonna put fight fire with fire. Um, I have so much freaking mana that, uh, really, I'm kind of surprised. Um, I thought for sure that I would play that just to get it out, but... Well, I guess I don't want them gaining too much life, that makes some sense. Alright, this card does me absolutely no good right now. <laughs> yeah, this, this is not looking good for me. This is really looking bad for me. <laughs> well, I got something here. Alright, and I don't think the tapping is a May ability either. I think that's a... When you attack, you tap an opponent's creature, so... They, um, they don't even have the option to not tap my creature. So, yeah, they're going to easily do 12 damage. Thir what is that, 13? Uh, yeah, 9 plus 4 is 13, so. Yeah, it's over. try to pronounce that name. Okay, it's alright, I got my hawk. It's good. Got some removal. I'm always disappointed in how few artifacts are played in Popper. <laughs> or at least on here. I think I heard Tron is like a thing in Popper and when you play in paper, get that mini heart attack whenever they play opt. Like, how are they countering? It's fine. I'm not a big fan of opt because it's not a. Uh, you don't get a lot of upside unless you're playing something like Drake's. Um, there is a game. Uh, if I had more common cards, uh, wild cards, I would, uh, I would build a proliferate deck for Popper. Uh, I have a good idea how to work it, and uh, but I messed up. I meant to buy the Drake that triggers whenever you play your second spell, because um, I also I want to build a version of it that'll work in Cascade. Um, so uh, I want to build like a Simic Cascade deck. So. Justin Lance. Um, I've got that. I, I become a big fan of that because I have it in my Death Touch deck and. Uh, 
it's just amazing when I get, <laughs> you know, I've got like a, at least three power and a death touch, and uh, you know, I can take out three creatures a, a turn with that. So uh, when it has first strike. It's just amazing how many people do not learn from that. <laughs> yeah. But gaining three life every turn is nice too, so. It's probably why that's in here. straight kill somebody um, I have not messed with this deck that much in a while so uh, I probably would put battlefield promotion in there instead now but, um, but maybe not um, I also don't like using the same cards over and over which you know, certain cards are more effective than others, so, um, but, uh, I just don't like playing that way. Feels like a cheat to me. Uh, I kind of wish that Arena would give some kind of bonus for you, you know, when you use, like, uh, in, especially in the ranked battles, I think it'd be cool if they gave a bonus for, um, winning with, uh, like cards that are not commonly used or something, you know? That could be interesting. That'd be hard to do in like a, a tournament or whatever, but on here it really wouldn't, you know, just do popular rate, popularity rankings with all the cards. Uh, be kind of funny because some people would be sneaking in like the dead last card just to like improve their their rank gaining. <laughs> oh. I think they're on their way. Okay, I had to pause that real quick because I just found out that when I finish this, I can go ride on roller coasters. Alright. Okay, um. Flying life gain, that sounds nice. Nice, nice, nice. Alright, so... Not the way this deck's supposed to work. But I'll take it. I'm trying to think if the Kefa is a... Uh... Oh. Yeah, I remember this. Because <laughs> when it happened, I was like, what do you have, two of those? <laughs> it's like, oh shit, they do. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I can't even be too mad about that. I can't tell you how many times I've pulled that trick. Except a lot of times, uh, my uh, Sapor Langs come out as angels, so. Yeah. Kind of mana screwed. I 
I might actually have to use this guy as a blocker. Because they have so many freaking creatures. Insightful commentary has dropped down maybe a little bit because I'm contemplating ro roller coasters. Uh, yeah, I thought I was going to get stuck with kids all day and then I had a meeting tonight, so now I guess I'm going to ditch my meeting. <laughs> my, for my uh, comic book creators, I'm not an AA or anything. I'm told I belong in SA, but whatever. <laughs> Not really sure. I don't know what my thinking was on that. I think part of it was that black and blue don't go wide very well. So... But it... No. Half the time... If I'm recording and I say oops a lot of the time, it that's like an indicator. Uh, to me when I'm recording the audio later that I messed up there. It wasn't like some strat secret strategy. Yeah, every once in a while um, I, uh, I just have my hand too close to the screen or something and it uh, uh, you know, it picks it up and reads it. So yeah, it's not looking well. Uh, but I assure you that this is like my best <laughs> pop protect. I won like six games in a row with this thing. It's, it, it gets ludicrous. But with them going wide like this, things like Adamant Will aren't doing me a lot of good, so it's just, you know, they're whittling me down and. Um, right here is kind of a tough decision. Do I want to bring out another blocker, or I could tap down one of their creatures? Um, oh, I think I remember what happens here. Yeah, okay, so... Don't attack this time, stupid. Okay, surprised I'm not passing the turn. Alright, not that worried about that. Oh wait, they did that on my turn. That's what screwed- okay. That's right, so now my calculation screwed up. I'd have to take out two creatures. Alright. Okay, I don't know why I did this. This was dumb. No. What I should have done was tap down one of their creatures. And then... So then I could have blocked one. See, they have five t block block one, tap the other, then they would have still gotten through with three, so there was just no winning on that one once they brought out another guy. Alright, and that is it for now. Uh, I will see you guys next time.